Welcome to Philadelphia. Located in the northeast of the United States, the city is steeped in American history and home to many iconic landmarks. Today I'll be exploring the beautiful city, trying out some delicious Philly foods and food halls, and learning about the history of the United States. So come along and see everything that Philly has to offer. I am finally here in the city of Philadelphia. I feel like I've been thrown into a historic town as it is one of the oldest towns here in America. And what better place to start our adventures than here in front of the city hall. This building was built here in 1894. At the time, it was one of the tallest freestanding mason buildings in the world. You can actually tour the inside, but it's a costly $35, so we'll just enjoy the outside of it. I have only just arrived in Philadelphia and I really love it. You got the history slapped right in the middle of the financial district. So this is the financial district and here behind me is the Philadelphia City Hall. I really love the details, the intricate details and the design on this building. Now the clock tower for me is synonymous with Philadelphia. It is absolutely beautiful. One of the prettiest clock towers I've seen in the world. And up top is Mr. William Penn. He is the founder of the city of Philadelphia. This city hall is probably the grandest one I've ever seen throughout my whole travels. You can actually go right through the courtyard and come out on the other side. It is absolutely beautiful. Just by checking it out outside, you don't have to go inside, but of course I'm sure there's a lot more history that you can learn. And there's a lot of plaques around here that you can learn from, but this is good enough for me. This is the Independence Hall here on 520 Chestnut Street. Behind me, over 250 years ago, the Founding Fathers signed the Declaration of Independence, thus creating our very own country. There is a tour you can do. You can sign up on recreation.gov and it only costs $1 for a 30 minute tour guide tour with one of the park rangers. So I'm gonna go ahead there right now and learn some history. Prior to your visit, be sure to reserve your tickets and time slot on recreation.gov website. During this short 30 minute tour, the park rangers took us into the Pennsylvania Supreme Court chamber and told us about some basic history facts. Afterwards, we visited the assembly room, which many people call the birthplace of the United States, because in this very place, the Declaration of Independence and the US Constitution were signed by the founding fathers. From the tour, I learned that in this house, Thomas Jefferson actually drafted the Declaration of Independence before he brought it into the Independence Hall where it was signed by the Founding Fathers. Now this area, this entire block is called the Independence Moor, kind of like what you see in Washington DC. It is a lot smaller, but it also has a lot of history. Now just behind me is the line to Liberty Bell. You can see the line is pretty long. It gets stretched for hour, over two hours. But if you don't want to go inside and check to see the bell and see the crack, you can also walk up to this little window and you can still see the bell, you just can't see the crack. I'm still here exploring the Independence Mall. The Independence Hall is just behind me across the street. But there are many more buildings. There's a little map that tells you what each of these buildings are, such as this one. This is the Second Bank of the United States from 1824. There's a lot of cool things, and that's what I'm trying to show you guys through the video. Be mindful, be open to new experiences, and check out some of the plaques because they have some very interesting stories to tell, such as I learned that the Mother's Day was invented here in Philadelphia.
So we are now at the Reading Market Terminal. So this is essentially a food hall, one of the oldest in the country. It was opened here in 1893, and we're gonna go check it out right now to find some delicious Philly goods. As I'm walking here through the Reading Terminal Market, there is so much here. There's the fresh produce here behind me. There's meats you can borrow. There's a lot of restaurants, different kinds of um, foods that you can try. I just tried the roast pork, which is one of the must tries here in Philly. And we are gonna go, go find Philly cheesesteak here next. When you order a Philly cheesesteak, you have to pick your meat, you have to pick the type of cheese, whether it's a Whiz, Provolone, or American, and you tell them whether you want your grilled onions or not. So here is my first Philly cheesesteak in Philadelphia. Bon appetit! It was pretty amazing. I would rate it an 8 out of 10. It's not the best Philly cheesesteak, but it definitely rates high up there on my list. Definitely top 3, so I definitely recommend Campos here right towards Penn's Landing. One thing I've been told to try while here in Philly is they call it water ice. I thought it was the same consistency as shaped ice, but it's a little bit different. I chose the blue raspberry flavor. And on a hot summer Philly day like today, this is perfect. Doing my best reenactment of the Rocky. As he reached, he shouted with all his fans and the city of Philadelphia right in front of me. Amazing views here. A really fun place to come check out. Lots of people exercising, lots of people taking in the views and the photos. And while you're here, don't forget to visit the Washington fountain that's right in front of me. Really beautiful with a lot of animals. I saw bears, I saw moose. Very cool fountain. And of course, don't forget to see Rocky Balboa himself. His statue is right to the side of the museum. I just left the Philadelphia Art Museum and I'm walking down the Benjamin Franklin Parkway but I see so many flags here. I see Lebanon, I see Latvia, I see Japan right in front of me. I don't know what the significance of this flag is but if you're watching from any of these countries of which flags you see, comment down below. I'm taking you to one of the hidden gems in my opinion, Alfred's Alley, named after Jeremiah Alfred, who was a blacksmith. And this alley depicts what colonial lifestyle was all about. This street was filled with homes of blacksmiths, shipmakers, furniture makers. It was a total of 32 houses in total, and they are so beautiful here. You can check them out. And what's really cool about it, this place is the cobblestone street. It really takes you back in time. Let's have a walkway through this street. If you are a history geek or you love beautiful architecture or you just want to feel like you're thrown back into Europe while still being here in USA, then Philly is a great place to do so. There are many way, alleyways like this in and around Philadelphia, so I think around two to three days is a minimum amount of time that you should spend here in Philadelphia to explore all the corners and history and the museums.
to understand how much this city meant to U.S. history. This is the place where the very first flag of the United States with the 13 stars for the original 13 colonies was sewn by Miss Betsy Ross. She was credited with sewing the very first flag after it was approved and designed by the Continental Congress. You can come here and tour the house to learn more about its history, but it is a very historic place. One of the signers of the Declaration of Independence is buried right behind me, Mr. Benjamin Franklin, lays here in the Christ Church Cemetery. Now let me save you guys $5 because you can pay $5 right there to enter the cemetery or you can just admire these, the graveyard from the street. <sighs> After visiting all the historical sites here in Philadelphia, I needed a little break and what better way to come to the waterfront here on the Delaware River. Right next to Penn's Landing is a park called the Spruce Harbor. It is really cool because from here you can see the historic Benjamin Franklin Bridge. You could take scenic boat tours and you can check out some of the old sh ships here that you can pay to visit and explore. I walked all the way out here on the Benjamin Franklin Bridge all the way across the river to show you guys the beautiful views of the Philadelphia city and its skyline. I've spent a total of 24 hours here in this beautiful city, learned a lot about its history, but the one day I spent here is not enough. You need at least two to three days. So I hope you, by watching this video, you really consider coming here to this beautiful city.